Bill Clinton once famously said that it all depends on what the word is, is. It depends upon what the meaning of the word is, is. Now, he was trying to use a little bit of verbal gymnastics to get himself out of trouble, but there are times where words that we think there's a meaning to don't always mean what it looks like. For example, the word and. The word and does not always mean and. What do I mean? Well, in Greek, there are different nuances. There are different ways that this thing is kind of nuanced where it can mean something other than and including something else. In other words, you might see and used when you have a number and a number. For example, in Greek, we don't have actual written numbers, drawn out numbers. We have to write it out. And so you might have the word 10 and 8 to, to mean 18. So you may have it to show some sort of sequence or something that shows that it's in addition to, or there's other nuances. Even if you are renowned as a biblical scholar, as a Greek scholar, this word can kind of give you some problems, can kind of frustrate you a little bit. I don't want to say the word frustrate, but it can cause some difficulties. And so I want to read kind of a little excerpt from Bill Mounts, who write, who is the author behind, the teacher behind Basics of Biblical Greek. Very good book. I would recommend anyone that's trying to learn Greek to use that book. Uh, now, I want to read this little excerpt that he's talking about the word Kai and how it didn't always mean and. It can mean other things in the word Kai. The Greek word means and, also, even, namely. Let's. I just want to read this little excerpt. He speaks about how he wished that maybe he would have used the word Kai a little bit differently than he does as a definition of his own book. He says, for example, in Basics Beyond, uh, I'm sorry, the Basics of Biblical Greek, he says, I give the definition of Kai as and, even, also, namely. And he says, in retrospect, I wish that I had listened, listed it as and, and then uh, even, also, namely. In other words, putting even, also, namely, kind of to themselves. He says that would have done a better job emphasizing that Kai has at least three basic semantic ranges. But if you go through life thinking that Kai basically means and, in other words, if all you ever thought that and was meant, meant to be stated as and, you're going to have a problem. He says not only would you be wrong, but you are going to find many verses and there are many. When I say many, many, we're going to look, we're going to look at a couple examples, uh, but, but you're going to find many verses that are deeply puzzling even troubling. And so he goes, he references the BDAG. He said that it gives two basic meanings. One, as a marker of connections. We're going to look at the BDAG in a second. And then two, as a marker to indicate an additive relation that he is not coordinate uh, to connect clauses and sentences. Also, likewise, so it function as an adverb. And he says, and now this last statement, you all, if you've heard me before, you might hear this. He says, in my experience, I prefer to see I prefer to see the explicative used as a separate category, and I tend to call it the ep exegetical use, meaning that you might have some sort of uh, when you have and it doesn't always mean this and this and this as though let's say maybe two or three different things, but kind of add a little bit extra to the word to kind of give extra explanation. And so I don't want to go in uh, belabor the point of what ep exegetical is, but it's just kind of just using a different word, a second word or third word to kind of give a greater meaning or emphasis to the same one where they all mean the same thing. And so we see that in something like in John 3, where he says you must be born of water and spirit. He's not speaking of two different elements. He's just speaking ep exegetical, referring to one instance, one thing happening. As a matter of fact, there's another famous passage that we look at that is also, the Kai is also used ep exegetically, and then we'll go to the b dag in a second. But one of these passages, we'll talk more about this later on, but in 2 Peter 2, 38, Peter said, and then repent, and the word that's used here for and is Kai, repent, uh, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so the question is, when we see this Kai here, and then we see also the Kai here, is he is Peter saying that there are three different things that you have to do? Number one, repent, and then be baptized, and then receive the Holy Spirit. The problem with that is, it's doubtful that this is to be taken as something that is some sort of chronological order or some chain to it, because how do you determine, how does a person force themselves or cause himself to receive the Holy Spirit? So this is clearly happening to you. And so this would be one of those uses where it's ep exegetical. There'll be more on that later. But one example that we could probably look at and kind of agree on 
how Kai is used is in Ephesians 1, 1. Notice what it says. Paul, an apostle of Christ, Jesus, by the will of God, to the saints who are at Ephesus and who are faithful in Christ Jesus. So the question is, this and this used here, are these two different groups? Or, and maybe a subset of the first group, or is he using this ep exegetically? So he's saying to the saints who are at Ephesus, these people also are faithful in Christ. Could you be a saint in Christ? Can you be a saint and not be faithful? If you are in Christ, aren't you also faithful? So in this case, the word is used uh, as also or namely. So it's not to be taken as and, even though the word that's used here is and. So I want to go to BDAC. I want to pull up this so that you all can see this. Here we have it stated that uh, the chi is a conjunction and there's different ways. And notice what he, what, what Mounts mentioned earlier. Th the definition of this first use of it is as a marker of connection and single words. And so the, so you might have, for example, connects two occurrences of the same word for emphasis. Uh, and so you may even have it seen done that way when it relates to different numbers. Going back to it, you can also see where he says, uh, adding the whole to the part and in general, for example, Peter and the rest of the apostles. And so it's still kind of that first way of using it, uh, this and that, two different things. There, there's some distinction to the two. But what about if there is no distinction? What if the and is not to be and, but it to be also even or namely? And so the second example that BDAG puts out is a marker to indicate an additive relation that is not coordinate to connect the clause and sentence also likewise. And so it functions as an adverb. And so if we go back, back to Ephesians 1, that's the example that we see here. To the saints who are at Ephesus, namely who are also or who are faithful in Christ Jesus. Now, the whole point of this is, and there is no real hard and fast rule. Context um, is going to dictate if you understand kind of the whole or the totality of what a person is saying, especially if there are other passages that you can bring in to help us identify this. For example, here, when we look at this passage, we already know that those who are saints, you have to be faithful in Christ to be a saint. If you are a saint, you're faithful in Christ. If you're faithful in Christ, then you are a saint. And so how do you determine it? Well, it's difficult. The point of this is to remember that, to remember that you cannot always kind of in a hard and fast way, dogmatically think that and always means and. And I know that can be difficult to explain and even understand, but that's just kind of how words work. Even in our English, there are all these different nuances and you have to remember that when you are looking at the words and trying to get a good understanding words. There's always rules and exceptions to the rules, just like it is with words. There's always different nuances and semantic ranges that each word can have. Amen.